New South Wales, the Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, she's trying her best to try and bring down their sort of expenditure out of this COVID crisis, wanting to save $3 billion by putting a freeze, no job losses, no pay cut, but a freeze on public sector pay. Rowan, where do you think this is at? Is it a good move or not? No, I mean, it's the right move. It's a little bit late and it's been poorly handled. What should have happened is right from the word go, from the get-go at a federal level and at a state level, we should have been told, well, if we're spending all this money to get us through the coronavirus crisis, where is that money going to come from? And from day one, at both the federal and the state level, our leaders should have been saying, by the way, we're taking pay cuts, and also mm. we will be demanding all public servants, whether it's the ABC, the bus driver, the bloke who, um, you know, stop go man, whatever, all public, or girl, all public servants will be expected to take a 10% pay cut because we know the private sector are being hit for a lot more than this, and this is what we will do, and this is how we're going to pay for it, rather than drips and drabs coming out, oh, we're going to do freeze this and freeze that. They should have gone up front much harder and said where the money was going to come from and made it clear that we were all in this together as they keep singing at us. Uh, Mark, just quickly, you're the guy that famously got rid of the overly generous defined benefit scheme for, for politicians' superannuation. What's your view on Polly's pay in this crisis? Should it be cut across the board? Well, freeze it, and if that doesn't do the job, cut it. Um, I've, I've got no problem with people on an ample income. Uh, the cut-off in a place like Sydney, which uh, can be very expensive, is probably about 200000 a year. That's most people in the parliament, uh, certainly all of those that are cabinet ministers, senior public servants. But, you know, the whole point here is that it has been poorly handled. Uh, I can report um, to the viewers that seven weeks ago, my colleague Rod Roberts wrote to the Premier saying we hear rumours of a wage freeze across the state public sector. Uh, we, as a One Nation grouping, want to make sure that the people who are pushed out on the front line of handling the health emergency, uh, the nurses, the ambos, the police, the corrections officers, uh, would receive a financial reward, an upfront bonus or the 2.5% two, two in recognition mm. they took the heavy risk. Now, people can say the hospitals are empty. Well, thank goodness they are. That's true. But those nurses, early in this uh, threat of a pandemic, when there were predictions of 150,000 people dying in Australia, they must have gone to work absolutely petrified. They would be on yeah, that absolutely. list of fatality. So... You know, for that risk and, and bravery they showed, and they've served our state well, I don't think they should be caught up in a pay freeze. But other groups like the, the teachers, New South Wales has the fastest falling academic results in the world. And uh, the teachers basically said they didn't want the students back. Um, the schools were safe and we couldn't get them up and running as they should be in the classroom. I don't think the teachers deserve the pay rise in a time of austerity, creating funding for capital works and employment creation, but I think those frontline workers definitely do. And at the end of the day, we wrote to the Premier and seven weeks later we haven't received a response uh, to that letter. So it's no way to garner support on the crossbench to not even give us the courtesy of a response. Yeah, well, I'll follow that up next week, if you don't mind. I have to leave it there, gentlemen. Rowan Dean, Mark Latham, thank you for your time, as always. Have a lovely Pleasure. Day. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter.